Hey everyone, <clears throat> how you all doing? <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome to the first stream of uh, 2021, the year when everything's gonna get better, including the Rockstar Interpreter. Um, so yeah, those of you who were watching before Christmas, I did Advent of Code live on Twitch every day. Um, and it was fun, and it was actually really cool. And uh, London and the UK has just gone back into like total lockdown for six weeks. You're allowed out of the house like once a day to go for exercise, and you can buy food and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, things are a little bit kind of uh, restricted here in terms of what we can do for entertainment. And uh, I kind of missed having the thing where every day I was live on Twitch doing some advent of code. So I thought, what would be a fun project? to do as a, a live kind of Twitch streaming series and, you know, publish some, some videos on YouTube and stuff as well. And I had a whole bunch of different ideas, but something that I wanted to do for a long, long time is uh, to build a... So Rockstar, for those of you who haven't heard of it, uh, it's a programming language that I invented as a joke. Um, and uh, the, the, the Rockstar language specification was based on basically taking as many like rock and heavy metal lyrics as I could um, and cramming them into a specification for a, a joke programming language. Um, and so... Uh, yeah, and, and the, the Rockstar thing, the, the language, like I said, started as a joke. Uh, I just put a parody specification up on GitHub and people kind of liked it and started, you know, starring it and doing things with it and building interpreters. Um, and eventually I, I decided I needed to build a, I actually wanted to build a Rockstar interpreter myself. So I did, and I built that, and that's the one. It's called Satriani because JS, JavaScript, Joe Satriani, rock and roll, heavy metal, guitars, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, Satriani is the... Uh, the, the Rockstar interpreter that is running on codewithrockstar.com. And if you go to try it and you click rock, it runs. And anyone can be a, a Rockstar programmer by just going to this web page and clicking on that button and uh, the thing happens. And uh, if we go and have a look at the code that powers it. Now, Satriani is, it's pretty good. Um, I went back to it recently to do a little bit of work and add some features and play around with some ideas for the language and stuff. Um, and it, uh, the greatest kind of asset, I think, of, of the structure of this project is the tests that exist around it. Um, because the way that, by the time I got around to building my own interpreter for Rockstar, a whole bunch of other folks out there on the internet had started creating examples of inputs and outputs. The testing strategy is really interesting because we didn't want, uh, there were some people doing it in uh, Python and some people doing Rockstar stuff in Scala and you know all these different languages. And they didn't want to tie it down to any one language's kind of unit testing framework like it has to be Jest or it has to be JUnit or NUnit or any of these kinds of things. So the way that the tests for Rockstar work is there's this massive folder full of, uh, this is, uh, yeah, that, that's it. If we go and have a look in the, the Rockstar repository here on GitHub, github.com slash rockstar lang slash rockstar, um, and have a look in tests, there's a folder in here called fixtures. And basically all the features that were ever added to the language, they exist in here as an input file and an output file. So we've got this function like array alike dot rock. Um, this is the program. This is the, the thing that, that you have to run. Um, shout my array, shout my array at 9999999. And then if you have a look at array alike dot rock dot out, this tells you what that program's output should be. So it doesn't matter, you're building your own, you know, interpreter for the language or anything. It doesn't matter what it's built in. Uh, you just need to build something that'll take a dot rock file, run it and compare standard out to this, this fixture, um, this array alike dot rock dot out thing. And uh, so there's a, a huge amount of flexibility in how the whole thing is, is, is built. And when I came to start building Satriani the first time around, and then when recently I came back and, and did some more work on it, um, I put this little thing on, on Twitter about like, you know, sometimes you get test coverage that's so good that you kind of, you add features to the language uh, or you can add features to software. You're like, I don't really understand how this works. I think maybe if I wrap that in an array, oh, the test went green. Um, okay, now I need to figure out why my code worked. Um, <laughs> so Antonio, the, the, the running joke with Rockstar is that it was this whole, you know, like, like recruiters trying to find Rockstar programmers. And it's like, well, yeah, 
anyone can be a rockstar programmer. Look, you just go to this website and you type in shout hello world and you click rock and you're a rockstar programmer. Hey, Chris, welcome back. Um, so yeah, I was just uh, saying to the, the, the folks on the stream here, um, yeah, I'm a... Uh, so I decided that my, my project... Now, if you have a look at the way uh, the Satriani interpreter for Rockstar has been implemented, um, it's, a, it's a parsing expression grammar. So there's a Rockstar peg file here. And this is the thing that says, okay, a program is any number of lines, and a line is a statement, and then an EOL and an EOF, and white space and comment, all this kind of stuff. Um, but if we get down into the, the guts of the language, the whole Satriani interpreter, by the way, is, uh, oh, hey, Samuel, uh, thank you. Yeah, the InnoQ thing, that was a, a, is a thing I did, did just before Christmas for a, um, a InnoQ, we were doing a conference, and they wanted a kind of keynote level talk for it, and I did some stuff with them. That was really cool. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, yeah, nice to see you on the stream, dude. Welcome. So anyway, um, but when you get down into the guts of the thing, the whole Satriani thing is less than a 1,000 lines of code whole thing, the, the, the interpreter, or rather the grammar. So that rockstar.peg file, when you run that, that spits out this thing here. And this thing here uh, is uh, large, because this is... A da -da 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 but that doesn't matter, because this is auto-generated code that we kind of don't have to worry about. Um, and so that's that, and then there's a, there's a cache parser thing there, but then the interpreter itself is basically just a big, uh, what I think they call a meta-circular evaluator, that just goes round and round and round and round and round, and we got this big loop here, and it says, right, what am I looking at? And this thing here, switch type, all of the, the, the syntax tree, that gets generated by the parser is a massive JSON document that uses strings to denote the type of uh, node. Uh, node is a horribly overloaded word in the context of JavaScript and things. Um, but basically, it's a syntax tree. And a tree is made of nodes in the graph theory sense of the word, not in the Node.js sense of the word. And uh, each of those nodes has a type. And so there's this, this the, the engine, the kind of guts of the thing, is this massive switch statement that just consumes every single part of this parse tree. And it does it by switching based on type. And type is a string. And uh, coming from a you know background where I spent kind of most of my career doing C Sharp and JavaScript side by side, because C Sharp's my favorite preferred language for doing backend dev, and JavaScript is the web. And you know, it's a sort of lowest common denominator, runs everywhere. Um, and so every time I have to resort to something like using strings to indicate what the type of something is, a little bit of my head going, yeah, this would be easier in a strongly, a statically typed language. But the reason I built Satriani in JavaScript is because I wanted it to run in a web browser natively. Like I just wanted to be able to stick it out on the web, and anyone who wants to, they want to run Rockstar, well, you're running it on your phone or your laptop, so I'm not paying for a server to, to host this stuff. Don't have to worry about security because the server-side stuff is all static. It's all deployed, and it's out there. Um, and so I wanted it to be JavaScript. And for a couple of years, I've been thinking I should I should look at TypeScript because uh, TypeScript is developed by the I believe the person who created C Sharp, um, Anders Halesberg, and it's basically typed JavaScript. And I've heard really good things about it from all kinds of people. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know. So so what I want to do is I want to build a Rockstar language interpreter in TypeScript. It'll eliminate a lot of these switch type case, action case, list, case conditional, all that kind of stuff. It'll be a really interesting learning project for me because I've not done TypeScript before. Um, so this is day one of that project. And this is literally, uh, you know, when I started putting it, it was like, ah, oh, I should probably do a bunch of work so I know what I'm doing before I go on the internet. But you know what? Nah. I have no idea what I'm doing at this stage. I've never written any TypeScript before. Um, I know my way around the JavaScript ecosystem, you know, the like node packages and uh, Webpack and uh, Babel and all this kind of stuff. And I've been doing a bunch of JavaScript work over the Christmas break, building a crossword puzzle engine, which was really cool and fun to work on. Um, but yeah, this is literally uh, today's stream. You're going to be watching me go, ooh, Google this, Google that, bang those things together and see if it makes a nice noise um, and kind of working through th things through on that basis. So um, what do I need? So the, the things that I'm going to need to make this thing happen is I'm going to need uh, 
a TypeScript. I'm going to need something that generates. I actually, I guess that the first thing, now I, this bit I did look up before. Um, peg grammar TypeScript is just the, the one piece of this. If that doesn't exist, then this whole thing is probably a non starter. Um, but it does look like there is a uh, plugin for peg.js. Uh, install peg with, uh, yep, that looks fine. And then generate a parser from JS code. Node.js require that, require that. Generate a parser, pass in a parser definition. Um, and uh, yep, OK, that all looks fine. All right. Um, so yeah, today, part one, kicking off the stream. The idea is I'm going to do this probably uh, three, four times a week, probably about an hour each time. And at the end of each one, or the beginning of each one, just be like, right, this is what we're going to try and do today. And today is uh, kick the thing around a little bit and work out what's the shape of the problem that I'm trying to solve here, and can I glue enough pieces together that I can get a really, really simple, I can write a grammar, I can have the grammar generate a parser that generates a TypeScript syntax tree, and then I can consume that syntax tree in a very simple interpreter and see what comes out the other side. Um, now, I'm, I'm being kind of optimistic that feels to me like it's probably something I can kick around and get meaningful, either something working or a meaningful experience inside of an hour. Um, I don't know yet. I haven't tried it. Uh, let's have a look. So uh, we've got now this, the, the interesting thing about this, uh, this, this TSPEG.js uh, TypeScript code generation plugin is, um, Dun, dun, dun. Yep, 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 yep. Now, PEG.js, the, 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 the JavaScript grammar engine, has some really, really nice features. Um, like it's got a little online interpreter and a whole bunch of stuff. So I, I'm wondering how many brick walls I'm likely to hit with this thing. Um, but let's, uh, let's try it. I'm going to run through this. I'm going to see what it does. And I'm going to see what I get out the other side. Um, and for today, I'm just hacking around and learning stuff. Uh, bits of this will be cherry picked into something real at a later stage. But quite often when I'm kicking around, you know, exploring some, hey, Arundhan, welcome. Nice to see you, man. Uh, so yeah, often early stages of a project, I'm just kicking things around. I haven't really got a plan yet. I just got a bunch of questions that I probably need to answer in order to make a plan. Uh, CD project, CD GitHub. Um, I guess get in it. Uh, actually, not even that. I'm gonna. I got a throwaway folder here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna play around in that one. Uh, da, 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 da. And yeah, hang on. Mm -hmm. I should fix that spelling mistake. So there we go. Uh, make the TypeScript hacks. CD TypeScript hacks. Uh, so yeah, this is completely like experimental. What can we do here? Um, how do these bits and pieces work? How do they fit together? What am I going to need to know to make sense of the next the next stage of this project? Uh, so let's randomly copy and paste code off the internet and see if it works. That's always a good place to start. All right. There we go. Oh, added two pa two packages. Uh, normally, when you do an npm install, you get like 470 packages from 915 contributors. Uh, that's that's impressively small. Uh, so now generating a parser from JS code. Uh, huh, 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 huh. Um, so what I'm doing is just looking through this and seeing uh, what do we got in here? We got some examples. All right, that's probably a useful place to look. Uh, Wow. Uh, OK, that's a syntax for JavaScript. That's probably a little bit overkill for what we want right now. That looks kind of manageable. That looks, yeah, that looks, that looks pretty nice. Simple arithmetics grammar. Um, now, what I want to do, like I said, I want to hack this thing and see what I need to do to uh, get this to output. Actually, I should probably look at what TypeScript actually does first. Um, I am maybe getting ahead of myself here. TypeScript, what is TypeScript? Type JavaScript at any scale. Uh, yeah, try it in your browser. Install it locally. TypeScript 4.1 is now available. JavaScript and more. Um, <laughs> hey.
hey, uh, Poisson, my fish, yeah, Rockstar. Haven't heard that name in a while. It keeps bubbling around. It's a it's a fun project that I pick up once in a while and just sort of keep kicking it along a little bit. Um, and every once in a while, a new pocket of the internet that didn't know about it finds out about it, and I start getting random emails from people going, I just found Rockstar, it's so cool, can I have some stickers? Uh, I may even be able to send out some stickers. I don't know. I read last week that all, like, I saw a couple of places saying, oh, we're not sending parcels from the UK to anywhere in Europe anymore because Brexit. And I was like, oh, that's going to make life interesting. Uh, but I think they're probably, you know, fixing it at some point. Um, uh, yep, 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 yeah. Uh, let's install it locally. Uh, npm install minus g TypeScript. Okay, so npm install minus g is global TypeScript should mean I just get TypeScript available everywhere and I can do whatever I want with it. And then we're going to do a kind of hello world type script and see how that goes. npx tsc, what does this do? tsc, it goes, ooh. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> Examples, tsc hello.ts. Do I have tsc? Yeah, I do. OK, so tsc is presumably TypeScript compiler. Um, what does hello world look like in TypeScript? TypeScript in five minutes. That looks like a good place to start. Uh, uh, TypeScript knows JavaScript and will generate languages for you. That's a good place to start. It's like, don't do anything different. We'll do all the special stuff. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, TypeScript supports an extension of the JavaScript language, which offers places for TypeScript to tell TypeScript what types should be. Uh, OK. Oh, cool. It uses JavaScript. Um, oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, TypeScript for Java and C-sharp programmers. All right, let's start with that. Rethinking the class. That's all very interesting. OOP and TypeScript, rethinking types. Uh, da, 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 da. Tutorial. Mm -hmm. No, something even more basic than that. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, OK. All right, let's try something. Um, here we go. Code dot. And we'll grab some example code from out of here. Uh, da, 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 da. Grab that one. Yep, yep, yep. And we're going to drop that in. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, where am I? Open folder. Thank you. New file. Uh, save that as person.ts. Uh, TSC person.ts, what do we got? We've got a, oh, it, it does nothing. That's good. That means no error messages. And it output what I presume is person.js, which is smaller. <laughs> because, of course it is, because uh, the interface definition we got here. Um, yeah, have you tried Dino? It's way nicer with TypeScript than Node. I have not tried Dino, but you know what? Today is the, uh, let's figure out how all this stuff works. Woohoo! Let's have a look. What is Dean? Dino's Ryan Dahl's new thing, isn't it? His, his like, I'm sorry for inventing Node.js. This is what it should have been like. Uh, it was announced by Dahl during his talk, 10 things I regret about Node.js. Yeah, I think that probably, uh, OK. Da, 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 da. Install it. I bet it's a, 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 a wow. It's not an npm install. It's a chocolatey install. All right. Uh, so at some point, Dino, I presume, is only server side. Uh, so at some point, this thing will still need to be transpiled from TypeScript into JavaScript, so it can run in web browsers out there on the internet, where you know normal people come along and play with it on their phone when they're bored. Um, so let me grab a. Uh, TypeScript is a superset of JS. Uh, actually, that's a point. Dino, 
So the question is, is, is there a, an incompatibility? But so Dino is uh, secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. The question is, what, does Dino plus parsing expression grammars, will PEG.js work on Dino or not? Um, Dino, Deno, I never know. It's one of those things, you know. Um, TypeScript is a subset of, of uh, JavaScript, yeah. Um, so basically it takes, as I understand it, it takes JavaScript and allows you to add things to it, which the TypeScript compiler will validate at compile time. So any JavaScript file is a valid TypeScript file, um, but then any uh, TypeScript can include things JavaScript does not understand. Uh, let's see if we can break it. That's often a, an interesting way of working with stuff here. Um, so uh, Dino and Node both use the Chrome V8 engine, same compiler, different runtime. Uh, one of the things here, <laughs> let's let's have a look and see what did what did Ryan Dahl regret about? Uh, let's have a look. Wikipedia, yay! Ryan Dahl, ten things I regret. Uh, about Node.js, uh, JS Conf EU. Oh, it's a YouTube video. No, don't play YouTube on YouTube. Everything will get meta. Um, I want a list. That's what I want. Is I want a uh, Randall ten things I regret. Let's see what we can find. Uh, da -da -da -da. Here's some of the things he regrets. Dynamic languages are great for certain things. In a server, though, you want things to be typed. Uh, design mistakes, didn't stick with promises, security, build system, package JSON. Um. <laughs> uh, Brandon Ike, when you've come to learn. <laughs> what I'm, and whenever you design a program, there's things you think might be cute, you always regret them, don't do them. Uh, the goal of Node was event-driven HTTP servers. Five or four regret not sticking with promises. Two regret security. Yeah, V8 is very good. Regret the build system. GYP. I don't even know what GYP is. I'm sure that's important. Uh, Package.json regret. Uh, Isaac and NPM invented it, but I sanctioned it. All right. Uh, node modules massively complicates the module resolution algorithm. Well, yes. Um, Require module without the extension JS. Yeah, you cannot admit the module that has to query the file system. Uh, seven regret index.js because there was index.html needlessly complicated, became unnecessary. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Chris, yeah, you joined a little bit. One of the things I mentioned at the beginning, TypeScript was. Uh, invented or, or created by, uh, I believe, by Anders Halsberg, who did Object Pascal. Yeah. Um, OK, so it says Anders Halsberg has worked on it. So he created Turbo Pascal, and he went to Microsoft, and he created C Sharp, when Microsoft were like, Visual J Sharp is not going to be a thing. Um, so cool. All right. So we've been, uh, what, kicking this around for about 20 minutes now, maybe half an hour, and it's like, all right, so Dino might be a thing, or Node might be a thing, and this is TypeScript, and this is the TypeScript superset and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to, uh, Dino is nice. So the question, the question with Dino is, is using Dino as a development language a good idea if the thing I'm building is going to end up running in JavaScript in web browsers? Now, that, that's a question that you can answer one of three ways. You can find one person who you trust and just kind of take their word for it, or you can ask a whole bunch of people, or you can try and do the research yourself. Um, but uh, let's, let's, Dino can import modules from anywhere. You know what, I'm tempted to give it a try. You know, it's early days yet. It, it's like I can blow this whole project away and start again tomorrow and pretend none of this ever happened, right? Which is a nice place to be when you're building uh, experimental implementations of comedy programming languages. Uh, let's install Dino and see what we get. Uh, okay, that might work. Do I have chocolatey on here? Yes, I do. Uh, right, uh, let's make the Dino hacks. Uh, yep, yeah. boom. You are not running from an elevated command shell. 
Uh, do you want to continue? Yeah. That was not successful. Let's try that again with the uh, terminal. Right click, run. As. Actually, I could probably do run as. Uh, da, 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 da. Except I am an administrator. I need like the Windows equivalent of sudo, which is the whole kind of weird uh, slash trust level. What is trust level on this thing? Uh, run as slash show trust levels. The following trust levels are available. Basic user. All right, let's 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 do this. Terminal. Right click. Run as administrator. Sudo. Make me a sandwich. Boom. Go. Right. Do you want to run the script? Yes. Of course, I want to run the script. Dum da dum. Downloading Dino. That's exciting. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, 10 people viewed my profile on LinkedIn. Did anyone else get recruiters on LinkedIn trying to connect with them on Christmas Day? Um. <laughs> uh, actually, I can't really. This year, I did actually put something on LinkedIn on Christmas Day because I had my last uh, like nerd van blog post thing went live on Christmas Day. Um, but I've always thought like that's got to be, you know, the recruiters on LinkedIn on Christmas Day going, hey, I thought it would be great to connect. And I'm like, really? But I guess this year is not like the other years in many ways. All right, I installed Dino. I guess now I take Dino and see what happens. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Console.log. Hello. Hello, that's nice. Uh, var my object equals name foo legs nine. Cool. This looks very JavaScripty. Yeah. All right. Um. <laughs> do you love languages that do that? It's like exit, quit, buy, leave, uh, terminate, control C, uh, exit using control D or close. Thank you. All right, that'll do. Uh, all right, we have Dino installed. Um, exciting. It's a completely unfamiliar programming environment. Uh, so what, what are we doing now? We're seeing if Dino runs TypeScript natively. Uh, control Z, uh, let, let's try that. Uh, no, Control Z does nothing. Control D. Um, I'm curious. I wonder what the. Uh, so I, I don't know if you'll know this. Um, the reason Control C is Control C and it interrupts things is because if you look at a 7 bit ASCII table uh, like this one here, there we go. Oh, look at that. It's nice. It's old school. Uh, da -da -da -da. ASCII chart from a 1972 printer manual. Um, ASCII character control C. So if you wanted to send control codes to an old fashioned uh, teleprinter, um, you'd send a, so control A was ASCII code one, which was start of header. Control B was ASCII code two, which was start of text, STX. Control C was control code three, which was end of text, which is why that's the terminate character. Um, end of transmission, control D, that was the hang up. That was what you'd use to terminate a connection on a serial device. Okay, so control D kind of makes sense. Um, and, and control G is bell, which is kind of cool, because if you go on a Windows thing and you go echo control G, it'll go bing. And that still works. Um. <laughs> ASCII was 7-bit. Um, ASCII was 7-bit, and the 8th bit was used for parity. Um, and there are still, if you go have a look at uh, um, the only thing that survives today that still uses 7-bit encodings is uh, email headers, SMTP email headers. And there is an encoding format called UTF-7, which is this thing here. Um, I realize we have got slightly off topic when it comes to building a Rockstar interpreter. Um, yeah, UTF-7 is uh, for representing Unicode text in uh, MIME messages, which only support 7 bits and email headers. Um, but yeah, ASCII was a 7-bit character thing. I got a whole talk about this where I talk about plain text for an hour, which is actually kind of fun. Um, and uh, yeah, the seven bits, the eighth bit, if you ever see code pages, um, code pages, a, a, a single code page is a rule that says this is what the other half of ASCII means. If that first bit, if the eight bit is set to high, 
then set to true, set to one, then the following characters have these meanings. And there's hundreds of these things, and they're completely mutually incompatible, and that's why we had to invent Unicode, so that we could read and write each other's text files and stuff. Uh, anyway, we are getting sidetracked. Uh, UTF-7, you can do cheeky injection stuff. I don't actually know. Um... <laughs> The Apollo land Lunar Lander's bite was 15 bits. Um, wow. <laughs> uh, so the earliest text encoding system in history was a thing called the Cook and Wheatstone Telegraph System, which used a five-symbol trinary encoding. It used physical wires with a positive or negative voltage, creating a loop um, from the, the sender to the receiver and back again. And so it had these five symbols, and one of them could be positive and one could be negative, and that gave you a five trinary symbol encoding system. Uh, let's go back to playing around with programming languages. Um, so we got Dino. So what I'm about to try here now is I'm going to go into my uh, throwaway projects folder that I had here, um, and I'm going to go into uh, TypeScript. That's there. Um, so I got this person.ts, uh, which is in our Visual Studio Code thing here. Um, and it looks kind of nice. Uh, I mean, how's that looking? Yeah, it looks pretty good. So, um, function greeter takes a person. Yeah, that's nice. This will be the TypeScripty stuff that we were talking about. So, if I go over here, first of all, if I just do dino person.ts, found argument which wasn't expected. Ah? Dino options subcommand. Dino minus minus help. Um, so the, the chat, we're talking about uh, bit representations in the Apollo landing system. My favorite kind of space software nerd detail thing um, is the space shuttle, space shuttle orbiter, or the, the space... There's no such thing as the space shuttle. It doesn't exist. Um, the, the vehicle that you know is the tra uh, the orbiter, this thing here. I got, I got one here. I, I happen to have one I prepared earlier. Um, this thing here is that's the orbiter, that's the tank, those are the external boosters, and the whole thing is the space transportation system. There's no such thing as a space shuttle. Um, and that's not gonna, there it is. Um, and uh, the guidance system on the space shuttle used five computers, four of them were the same specification, they were basically copies. Same spec, same company implemented on the same hardware. Um, and the fifth one was the same spec implemented by a different company running on different hardware. And so if they got erroneous results, they'd run all five of them, same parameters, same input. If one of the four produced an erroneous result, they'd take it out of the loop because they thought that one had developed a fault. If they all delivered erroneous ones, the whole system would defer to the fifth one for that calculation because it's like we must have find a... Uh, um, yeah, I know it was a common name, but but you know you won't you won't officially find space shuttle in the NASA documentation anywhere because there's no such thing. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, if if all four of the replica systems um, produce different output, then the fifth one they'd defer to that because they like we found an undefined edge case in the implementation that was done by this company on this hardware, but the odds of the same edge case being in the same place in the same algorithm on the other implementation on the other hardware by the other company, probably zero, so let's trust that one instead. Uh, right, how do we run things with Dino? What do we want to do? We want to, you know, bundle, cache, compile, completions, doc, eval, format, help, info, install, wasp, REPL, uh, run, run, Dino run. That looks pretty good. Dino run person.js. Uh, okay, document.body ain't gonna work. Let's let's hack that out. So that's our person.ts. That's our TypeScript file. Um, <laughs> typing is hard, eh? Uh, Console.log. Uh, what what is it I want to do? Yeah. So so I I got greeter is gonna return a string. So console.log. Uh, greet user. Okay, there's that. So first of all, uh, what do I get if I just do node run person or node person .js? Uh, documents not defined. Okay, so first tsc person .ts. That's going to turn TypeScript into JavaScript. Then I can do node person .js. That's going to run hello Jane user. But if I do Dino run person .ts. Hello, Jane user. All right, so Dino runs TypeScript natively. I don't have to transpile it to JavaScript. So Dino gives me a thing that'll run TS files. Uh -huh. So 
What do we need? I'm going to just break this thing, actually. Um, interface person, first name, last name, string. Uh, what happens if I put a thing on here that say age int integer? What, what, uh, g give me a, give me a, give me a, a piece of TypeScript here. Uh, cannot find name integer TS yes. int int does, does TypeScript support ints? Uh, what does TypeScript support? TypeScript integer type. It's going to be number, isn't it? It's going to be all uh, numbers in TypeScript are either uh, bum, bum. yep number 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 number. Okay, so age number that probably. So we've defined a person interface. So now what I want to see is one the TypeScript compiler. What's it going to make of that? Boom. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so it's saying, all right, you, you've mung together this random block of JavaScript here, and then you've tried to tell me that that thing's a person by passing it into your greeter function, but your greeter function uh, only accepts... Uh, so Poisson, if you're on... Uh, so one, if you're watching on YouTube, Twitch is quicker. The latency on Twitch tends to be a lot lower. Um, also, YouTube kind of lets you do action replay, which means you can end up 20 or 30 seconds behind. If you do a hard refresh on the whole page, sometimes that'll kick it up to live and watching the, the exact point or as close as you can get. Um, stream latency, the best we get is three or four seconds. Sometimes YouTube ends up 20 or 30 seconds behind. Um, so, <coughs> All right, so one, that that's TypeScript. That's what TypeScript is doing. We've made a rule here that says, okay, a person has to have an age and the age has to be a number. Um, and this thing here is not allowed. Well, I'm just playing around with this. Uh, let me just see, uh, TypeScript interface, yeah, can't do things, all right, that's fine. Um, <laughs> not logged into Twitch on your laptop. There might be a way we can fix that, or maybe not, I don't know. Twitch is one of those things, like, some people are like, yeah, and other people are like, no, it's for gaming only, we don't log into it on sensible computers, because that would be bad. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm curious now, I'm saying, you know, is there a way in TypeScript of specifying an optional parameter or is it a literally like a, you define an interface, uh, TypeScript optional argument. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we'll come back to that. There's going to be a lot of interesting TypeScripting going on over the course of what we're doing here. Right, so. Um, hello, Will or Vil or... Is it Will or Vil? I honestly can't tell from the typeface. Very tiny. Um, <laughs> anyway, hello, welcome. Nice to see you. Uh, so we, what are we doing? We are looking at can we do parsing expression grammars in Dino using TypeScript. Um, so I want to dig out over here. I've got this thing here was the TypeScript PegJS thing. Um, now. In theory, if what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a bunch of code out of here. I'm going to dump this into a file. I'm going to try running that through both of these interpreters that we got. Um, oh, thank you. That's, yeah. <laughs> the funny thing about the art of code is the one that the YouTube algorithm kind of picked up and went, everyone needs to watch this, the one from NDC London. There's like six versions of that talk on the internet, and the one from NDC London, for various reasons, is the worst recording of that talk that exists. Um, there were, my, my MacBook had died the previous day and I'd run it on my Windows machine. There were missing typefaces. Um, but uh, parameter name question mark number, let's try that. Uh, thank you, Gianluca. Let's see if that works. Uh, yeah. Sweet. All right. So today we learned um, if you want age to be a thing that you don't necessarily have to have, you put a question mark on it. And if you put the thing on it and let's just try this. Uh, so I'm guessing now if I say age uh, 11 and go back, it's now that should blow up and it should uh, no TSC TSC. There we go. TypeScript compiler person dot TS uh, string is not assignable to number. All right. This is kind of nice. Um. <laughs> Oh yeah, the DDD's Midlands one. That was fun. There's a um, there's a video of that actually. They published one, so they got one. There's one from Build Stuff. There's one from the uh, the the thing I did in Warsaw at the end of the well year before last. Now 
Um, and yeah, the London one, it's a, the quality of the recording is fantastic because NDC do a really good job. Um, but yeah, it's the kind of thing like if I'd known a million people were going to watch it, <laughs> I'd have done a couple of things differently that day. But hey, you know, it's life. I'd, I'd rather a million people watched it than nobody watched it. Uh, so what do we got? Uh, okay, this is good. This is nice. This is this is kind of uh, doing what I think. So let's... Um, I want to go over here and I want to do a... Uh, pegjs.generate. So that's a plugin. What I'm really interested in is... Um, the... So let's look at the way, let's, let's just backtrack and look at the way PEG.js works. Uh, so PEG.js is a, a NPM install. That. I'm going to grab a copy of that one. Um, and I'm going to drop that in here. Yeah, paste that anyway, that's fine. So what PEG.js does is it takes grammar files, which are .peg files, and it turns them into... Uh, let's get a really simple peg example. There's one in here somewhere. Um, what have we got? Nope, 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 nope. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, so if I come over here and I drop that in there and I save that as... Uh, Let's save it as integers.peg, that'll do. So we got an expression grammar here. Uh, if you've not seen these before, the way that these things work is they say, all right, well, your, your program is, each one of these things is, a, is a, a named rule. So start says, well, okay, the program starts with an addition. And an addition is either a multiplicative plus an additive, or it is a multiplicative on its own. A multiplicative is a primary multiplied by a da 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 all the way down to an integer. So this thing, in theory, should give us a parser that can parse simple arithmetic expressions, like uh, with, with brackets and additions and stuff in them. So if I come over here and I run that thing through, so PEG.js should exist and it should be installed and it should uh, pegjs integers.peg that will generate a integers.js and if we have a look at integers.js that is the grammar that has been generated um, so what I need to do now is the, the kind of test harness that holds this whole thing together if I save this as harness.js uh, yeah, that'll be fine, and I want to uh, require, this is the bit I can never quite remember the syntax for. Um, what is the export on this? Uh, parser. Yeah, module.exports equals parse, peg parse. So that thing there is going to be, let me just check the, the, the Satriani source code, because I solved this problem before and I cannot remember the syntax. Uh, Satriani interpreter, thank you, there we go. Um, that shouldn't be there, that should be there. Uh, so we're looking for uh, Satriani.js. There, const parser equals require, that's the syntax we need here. So, uh, const parser equals require. So this should just be dot slash integers dot jf. And then I should be able to say in here var result equals parser dot parse. Uh, so this should be able to parse something like one plus two plus three. Uh, console dot log result. And if I run that over here in, I'll just node it for now. So node harness.js, that does produce one plus two plus three is six, plus four times five, yep, okay. So that's, we got a very simple grammar running in there. Now what I'm interested in, and I'm gonna go into this integers.js thing, or I'm gonna go integers.peg, uh, because what I want to do here is to return a, instead of this thing, so at the moment this is running, the, the parser is basically running the program for us. Um, so when, when peg hits this thing here, it is running this little snippet of JavaScript here that is saying uh, return left plus right. 
Now, I want to return something different here. I want to return a different kind of... I want to return a strongly typed node. That's what I want to be able to do. That's the, the kind of today's goal, is can I get a parser that spits out a parse tree, which is a TypeScript object containing strongly typed nodes? Um, so now what I want to see is how do we do that and what do we need to do to be able to, to, to work with it? Uh, so that's going to multiply. That's that, that's that, that's that, that's that. So if we're doing this in vanilla JavaScript, um, I would uh, spit out something like uh, return new. So this, or actually this isn't even a new, is it? It's just literal. So this would be a thing which is uh, type would be an addition. Left hand side would be left, RHS would be right. Okay, so that instead of actually doing left plus right, instead of doing the, the calculation, we say, please capture those things, put them into this JavaScript object, which has a type of addition and return the left hand side and the right hand side. And then down here, I wanna do the same thing. I wanna say return type, and this is gonna be uh, multiplication. LHS left, RHS right, that's fine. And then down here, if I get, so primary is an integer or it's an additive. Now these primary only exists in terms of references to other rules, so it has no behavior of its own. Um, uh, yeah, that should, okay. And then integer, we wanna return, uh, this will be a type of, number and the uh, value is going to be make integer on digits. So this, this little chunk of code here that turns strings in our input file into integer values in our parse tree, that's the thing that we want to do. So now if I run this thing through again, uh, so first of all, I need to do the pegjs integers.peg, blowing up, bang found instead, what is that line 2319? Um, uh, what did I do wrong? That shouldn't be there, and that shouldn't be there. And uh, that should be fine. Uh, no, 2319 expected, but oh, found instead. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah. I think. That's probably it. Yes. No, come on. Uh, pegjs integers.peg. All right, that's given us the parser. So now if we have a look at our harness function, so before console.log result, so the, the parser before was doing calculations for us. I've just changed that. That parser is no longer doing calculations. That parser should be now creating chunks of JSON or chunks of... Uh, what looks like JSON, but is actually JavaScript literals, right? So let's do a pegjs integers dot uh, node harness dot js. Uh, that's unexpected token. Nope. All right, that's not going to work. Uh, so I can take that out. Uh, let's see what we got now. No. So uh, pegjs integers back and node harness dot js. There. Boom. Okay, that worked. That's what we're looking for. Um, Except, uh, yeah, yeah, so there's a, a, a limit there, the, the left-hand side object, right-hand side object. But this is effectively given us the, the, the thing that we want. If I go back over into our harness function here, and let's give it a, a couple more sort of slightly easier examples. So result equals, parser dot parse, let's do a one plus two. And have a look at what we get out of that. Um, so yeah, this this little chunk here, is saying, yep, I know how to recognize that. You've got an addition statement in your program and the addition has a left-hand side, which is a number with the value one, and it has a right-hand side, which is a number with the value two. Um, so what I wanna do now is I wanna see, can I replace these with something, cause I don't want this type addition. I wanna return an actual instance of a thing that the TypeScript compiler is gonna pick up and recognize and do something interesting with it. Um, and to do that, I need to look at uh, TypeScript. 
and kind of skim read the documentation until something jumps out at me and says, this is how you do the thing you're trying to do here. Uh, let's have a look at the docs, TypeScript for Java and C Sharp programmers. Yep. Uh, da -da -da -da. JavaScript functions, ERP and TypeScript. You can still use classes. Now I have a feeling that, uh, Now this is where things get a little bit interesting. Okay, so I know how to do what I was trying to do. If I was doing this in C sharp, I'd be like return a new one of these, return a new one of those, return a new one of those, and then I'd have a big switch statement based on the type of the thing that's being passed in. Um, so uh... <laughs> Okay, this is interesting. So identical types, class car, class drive, let W car equals new golfer. Um, that's interesting. Uh, ooh. Interesting. This is this is kind of what I was looking for here. TypeScript's type system is fully erased. Information about a generic type parameter is not available. That's generic types. Um, okay, handbook, yeah, boom, basic types, let is done boolean equals false, decimals, color string, that's fine, that's fine, that's all right, uh, sentence, yep, strings, number arrays, uh, okay, so we've got generics, that's interesting, we've got tuples of a string and a number, Okay, that's kind of entertaining. We've got enums. Enums is good. I like enums. Having to use strings for everything all the time proved to be very, very uh, laborious. Uh, we got unknown, that's fine. Constant, yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna jump ahead and I'm gonna do TypeScript switch on type and see if that yields anything. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, this is interesting. So what I'm looking at here is basically the um, interface. We got class implements action, so that's fine. That's that's all right. That's all. Uh, discriminated union. What is a discriminated union? Uh, advanced ways, type guards, differentiating types, unions and uh, values can overlap. Um, okay, so we've got, uh, okay. Type guard is some expression performs a runtime check, guarantees the type is in scope. Pet is fish is our type predicate. Um, da -da 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 -da. Curious. Curious, curious, curious. All right, so. Um, this, by the way, is a very familiar experience when you're figuring new stuff out, is um, kind of bouncing around between Googling how do I solve this specific problem, I know I don't understand the context, but give me something I can copy and paste, so I get the little dopamine hit of, yay, my code works, and trawling through documentation going, all right, I don't know what that means, I don't know what that means, that might be interesting later, I'm not entirely sure what this thing is for, hmm, that looks curious, I might come back to that. And what happens is over the course of, you know, hours, days, weeks, decades, um, the two kind of reach a, a point where they join in the middle. 
And so on the one hand, you're sort of building up contextual and background knowledge about things you haven't used yet. And on the other hand, you're building up a sort of library of cargo, uh, I was about to say cargo cult. Apparently we don't say cargo cult anymore, but no one's come up with a, I think a compelling replacement for it yet. But you know what I mean? It's like stuff that you do and it works and you don't know why it works, but you know that it works. And gradually the one informs the other and the other informs the one and you end up with a kind of understanding of the whole ecosystem and how to apply the bits that you, bits that you want in it. Um, so what I'm looking for is, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, the discriminated union solution on Stack Overflow. So let's let's have a look at how we would implement that. So uh, da, 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 discriminated unions. Uh, You see this one, I kind of, um, <laughs> so this doesn't go, as, as I said at the beginning, one of the things that I was trying to get away from is the fact that in, uh, in, in Satriani, every language node needs to have a, Oh, I guess with this one it might be different because I can specify the discriminator on the class definition instead of having to um, uh, specify on every instance. Uh, let's let's try something. I'm just gonna try sending Spike sending out here a second. So we got this this whole bunch of stuff here. Um, now, what I want to know is. Uh, class specific action implements action. So I, I'm assuming that there's going to be a bunch of code in here somewhere. So this is this is my JavaScript at the top, which gets baked into my parser. So I'm going to say um, interface no, I, I, node 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 node. All right, it's a node. That's what it is. Boom, there it is. Um, class addition node implements node. Now this is probably going to blow up. And the reason I think this is going to blow up is that PEG.js doesn't know how to interpret implements. Class addition implements node, and this is going to have a kind of addition, and it is going to have a left-hand side, which is a node, and it is going to have a right-hand side, which is a node. Um, and then we are going to have class multiplication node implements a node. And this is going to have kind is multiple ah, times. I hate the word multiplication. Uh, left hand side is going to be a node. Right hand side is going to be a node. Now, this is a bit kind of quick and dirty when it gets to doing something like this for real. There is no formatter for peg files installed. Install one. There are none. Okay, never mind. Because, um, you know, you wouldn't have a language syntax where you can multiply, say, a function by a string, because that wouldn't make any sense. So there's going to be some kind of class hierarchy baked into this thing. Um, okay, so what I want to see now is when I run this thing through peg.js, um, yeah, unexpected strict mode reserved word. Interface is blowing up, and it's blowing up because this chunk of stuff at the top here, um, it doesn't know how to make sense of that because that is uh, not allowed. <laughs> so if I chop that lot out and I spin up a new file here and I'm going to save this as uh, syntax.ts. So this is my, my language nodes definition and it's a TypeScript thing. That needs to be one of those. That needs to be one of those. That, that, that. Okay. Uh, why is that complaining? Uh, it's complaining because node is a thing. Node is an interface from which a number of DOM API object types inherit. Okay, so this is going to be a rockstar node because, you know. There. Right. 
So that kind of works. But so now I've got that and I got that and that that seems to hang together. Okay. Um, now the question is in here, if I say return. Uh, so let's put a con an, an addition and a, a constructor on this uh, constructor LHS RHS this dot LHS equals LHS and these need to be decorated now because TypeScript um, I think hang on da -da -da -da. what's the thing we're trying to do here we want uh, yep they need a type after them Can you inherit constructors? We don't know. Uh, inheritance we'll look at later. Uh, this RHS is a rockstar node. And RHS is a rockstar node. So we're going to stick that in there, that in there. Plug those two in like that. And update our thing here. So if we see that, we want to say return a new addition node left right this is it this is the thing that I want to see can we make this work um, now we've got this this we need another node type in here which is we need a class number node which implements rockstar node and this thing is gonna have kind is number and we're going to have constructor um, do, 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 do value here is going to be a number according to the TypeScript. Is that what I want there? Yep, that's fine. Um, this dot value equals number. Okay. So we've got addition nodes, we've got multiplication nodes, we've got number nodes. We can create number nodes by giving them a number. So at this point here, this thing should be return new number node on make integer digits of that. Uh, this thing here is going to be return a new multiplication node, left hand side, right hand side. So uh, actually, I'm going to just fix up uh, these things. So that's going to be LHS. That's going to be RHS. That's LHS. That's RHS. The reason I'm doing this is because the words left and right are not the same length, and that offends me enormously. There are not enough pairs of words in English that mean the opposite of each other and have the same number of letters. And there should be. Um, First and final, that's a nice one. Commenced and concluded, that's another nice one. LHS, RHS, yes. Up, down, uh -uh. left, right, across, down, and the, the, yeah, something should be done. Um. <laughs> so. Right, so what I'm thinking here is we got a couple of ideas. Uh, one, this might work. I don't think it'll work, but it might work. Um, two is I could, in theory, um, if the PEG.js cannot cope with raw TypeScript, then what I could do is I could include the output of the type. So I, language syntax is TypeScript. The TypeScript, um, <laughs> uh, I just learned Chris's comment. I like that on the same line. No, 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 no. Symmetry is, is everything should line up beautifully in columns so you can use block cursors to do powerful things. Um, my hunch is that what I'm going to have to do is to take all of my syntax definition, run that through the TypeScript interpreter, produce the JavaScript output, and import the JavaScript into the PEG.js so that the JavaScript parser is consuming the already generated JavaScript syntax. But then I should be able to build an interpreter in TypeScript that references those. Uh, we'll get to it in a second. Let me let me let me see what we're doing here. 
So that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, addition node, multiplication node, number node. Okay, so let me see how this thing fails, because that's that's what's going to give us interesting output here. Parser.parse is not a function. 1179 expected, yeah, but bracket found. Um. <laughs> So it says that 11, uh, that's weird, harness.js. Uh, no, I'm looking at the wrong file here, integers.peg. Uh, 79, oh, that needs to come out because that's not a thing anymore, that's not a thing anymore, uh, that's not a thing anymore, run the thing again. Uh, okay, that's good, number node is not defined. So I now just want to see what I need to do in pegjs over here. Uh, so we got peg using the parser, npm install generating using, yeah, no, that's not it. Um, peg equals required JS, peg.generate. Uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> so, uh, command line, yeah, that's the pegjs command, that's fine. Allowed to start rules, cache dependency, export, extra options. Yep, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So... What I'm looking for here, because I've not done it before, is the little chunk of code that is necessary to uh, something akin to this. Um, let me have a look. What does harness JS syntax look like? Uh, integers JS, what's the export? On the end of that, it's module.exports equals syntax error and parse. So if I have a look at my syntax.ts and sticker module.exports equals um, number node. Actually, I should be able to just export class on these, shouldn't I? Okay. And then I should be able to, at the top of this thing, just drop in in my integers. So this little snippet at the top that requires syntax.js. So, um, right, so what I'm wondering is if I run TypeScript compiler on syntax.ts, that'll give me syntax.js. Syntax.js should be a um yep use strict exports es module exports dot number mode equals that's fine uh yep that's all right let's see what we got so uh if i now do pegjs integers.js Expected code block end line identifier, but end of input found. What? Uh, no, that should be integers.peg. Sorry. Okay, that worked. That's interesting. So now if we have a look at our um, integers.js, which is the parser thing that got generated for us, and I look for number, now look at that. Okay, so we've now got our parser, ex or our, our grammar exporting a parser, um, and the parser is referencing our TypeScript constructory things. So in theory now, in harness.js, require parser, let's run that, see what we get out the other side. Uh, yeah, just node harness.js is what I want at this point. Node harness.js. Number node is not defined. All right, that's fine, because we need here in our harness to require 
dot slash syntax dot js. And then the last piece I'm going to do for today is I'm going to say, well, what if harness and syntax were both native TypeScript and the, the round tripping it to that should work. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Number node is not defined. Why is number node not defined? Integers.js. Uh, that should import all the things. Require syntax.js. Yes. 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 Uh, what is the JavaScript import syntax that I need to use to say import a specific thing from a something else? Uh, the error is in integers.js. Yes, it is. But that's fine. So the, the, the thing is saying, well, when it gets to there, it doesn't know what a number node is. But at this point, I need somehow to say, maybe I need to inject a, a chunk of JavaScript into the output, generating a parser, import stuff from, well, let's try. I'm never quite sure because of the two different module syntaxes. Let's try import number node from syntax.js. Um, well, the, if you have a look at syntax.js, we've got export number node, export multiplication. That stuff's all exported. Uh, the exports are there. The exports all work. Uh, so import number node from syntax. If we come over here and run that, cannot use import statement outside a module. Uh, all right. So that's fruity. Um, Require module on the module, module require module, yes, fine. Const config equals require that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hum, 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 hum. Yes, require multiple exports. Uh, yep, that's fine. That's module exports equals that, 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 that. Uh, uh, hang on, maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, const syntax equals require dot slash syntax dot js. Okay, what do we get if we run that through? So we've got our uh, node harness JS is what we're going to run. Still not working. Number node is not defined. Uh, so what if we have a look at our integers.peg again and I drop in const syntax equals that. And then in here, syntax.addition node. Uh, that. This might work, it might not work. And if it does work, I'm gonna go away and scratch my head as to why it works. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna try something else. Uh, there's the number node, there's that, that's fine. So peg.js integers, yep, okay, that worked. We've got a grammar now. Let's have a look at the grammar that got generated. And that should somewhere down here, return new syntax.number node. All right, that's nice. Um, the syntax.ts stuff inside integers.js, the import in harness.js is going to do nothing. Uh, let's have a look. So that's fine. So now when I run node harness.js, boom, look at that. Um, 
So the integers.js. So this thing here, um, const syntax equals request. And okay, so that now, I think if I scrub that, yep. And let's just, so that's the peg.js, that one's that one. Then node harness.js, that works there. So now what I want to do is I want to say, all right, harness.js isn't JS anymore. Harness.js is now TypeScript. So save that as file save as harness.ts. Okay, so now if I do, oh, what the hell? Dino harness, Dino run harness.ts. Uh, cannot find name require. Uh, uh, um, uh, da, 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 da. That looks to me like uh, you've just broken the rules of your randomly chosen ecosystem type error. Um, Oh, that's interesting. TSC doesn't work either. Um, what do you think, gang? Shall I just copy and paste this try npm my minus save dev types node into what I'm doing and see what comes out the other side? Uh, yeah. Let's do that. Grab that. Shift control C, shift control V, boom. Uh, da, 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 da. One package from 45 contributors. Okay, that's all right. Um, let's let's try. So so tsc harness .ts. All right. So that's now output harness .js, which is now so tsc uh, tsc. Where did it go? So I do that, that compiles the TypeScript harness into a JavaScript harness and then runs it. Um, so then what I need to do is I need to say uh, result equals parser does. So this is my TypeScript thing. So now I can do that thing that we, we talked about. TypeScript uses import not require. Um, so if I say, uh, so this will be what import parser uh, from integers.js why is that complaining cannot find module yeah you can come on it exists you know it exists we talked about this import parser from that no exported member parser uh, what the hell is it called uh, pause module does not provide an export named pars. Gosh. <laughs> right. So. Let me do a quick look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Import documentation modules. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep. Okay. That's all fine. Um, all right. So it just looks like a, something's glitching here on the import syntax. Um, Uh, 
and put the entire module into a single variable. Let's try that uh, over here. And we're going to, this is harness.ts import star as parser from dot slash integers equals parser dot parse. Okay. And try a parser dot parse and see what we get. And you know, run harness.ts cannot resolve integers because it needs a dot js on the end. Module dot exports. Module is not defined. All right. TypeScript hex integers dot js 491. Hmm. So. Okay. That's interesting. That's all right. So input star as parser from integers is not working and it's not working because integers.js which is not our code, it's code that was generated for us. This has a module.exports. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Maybe, 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 maybe. Okay. That worked. That that kind of worked. So the the okay. The, there's two things here. We've got the TypeScript compiler, and we've got the Dino runtime. Uh, Dino doesn't support module dot exports. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we just uh, I think we just got to the same point um, of uh, running Dino on PegJS or running PegJS on Dino. It may not be a thing that is entirely possible without some uh, gnarly hacking going on with it. But what I'm interested in doing now <coughs> is um, bolting in a sort of very rudimentary uh, interpreter. So at this point, I'm going to say a, uh, a da, 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 dum. So that's, there's that console log result is fine. Uh, okay, let's build a meta circular evaluator. Um, do, 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 doom, var, evaluate. We're in harness.ts, so, so function evaluate. Uh, this is going to take a uh, tree, which is going to be some kind of syntax tree. And at this point, this is where we need to do that discriminated union thing that we found on Stack Overflow a little while ago. Uh, Stack Overflow, TypeScript, discriminated union, boom. Uh, where was it? Um, do, 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 do. TypeScript type of object. There, that's what we had. So we had the uh, discriminated unions there, so let action, that's fine, and that's fine, and that's fine. Um, and we need a property as a discriminator. I'm gonna come back to this at a later stage because I still don't like the property as a discriminator thing. Um, so function evaluate tree, uh, let 
uh, node be a, so this point node is going to be a, uh, um. <laughs> this is the weird part now, because this is where we've got, uh, let node be a, um, Addition node, yep, grab that, that's fine. Or a multiplication node or a number node. Um, switch uh, node dot kind, and then this, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, hmm. Yeah, that's that's what I'm kind of thinking. But at that point, TypeScript hasn't given me anything. I'm still switching arbitrarily on a random string that got bolted onto an object, which makes the whole point of using TypeScript kind of, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it undermines the justification for trying to port the parser from pure JavaScript into TypeScript instead. Um, Because and if we have a look at the the, the, the thing we got out of that, let me let me scrub this out. I'm gonna copy that a lot. Back all this up. Back all this up. Um, whoa. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's what we want. There. We want to keep those two console.logs. So if I if I run what we got, which was this, um, what I want, what the code that I want to be able to write here is uh, function evaluate um, n, which is a Rockstar node, and I want to say switch type of node case multiplication node return evaluate node dot left hand side uh, so in this case it'll be something like uh, LHS equals this let RHS equals evaluate node dot RHS return LHS times RHS uh, case addition node let uh, so those two are going to be the same return LHS plus RHS case number return uh, node dot value um, so that's the code I want to be able to write that is the the the, the core of the evaluator engine that I want to be able to build with this thing. Um, and if I compile that, it's not going to work. And it's not going to work because found eight errors. It's like, we don't know what any other stuff is. So first of all, um, none of that stuff is, is going to work quite right. So let's have a look at the, uh, where did that, that, that thing go there? No, not that one, not that one. Uh, TypeScript switch on type. Because what we, what we can do here is, you know, if I go have a look in syntax.ts, uh, so if I just plug in that and that and that and plug that in there, no, like that. Uh, so there's our syntax tree, and then we want to switch on uh, 
uh, node.kind, there's a little k isn't it? We can, let's take those out. Just just bang that in there. So that times that dropped in there, and we've got to evaluate that, and we've got to evaluate that. That is superfluous and uh, redundant. Let me just run this, see if we get a clean build. It won't work yet, but if it compiles, we're, yeah, okay. Uh, cannot find name Rockstar node. Now that's because we are gonna need to either in our parser, we need to export the thing that we imported, um, or we need to import the same thing again. Uh, syntax. So I can come over here and I can import star as syntax from syntax.js. Okay. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, so Rockstar node should uh, export that. So what does that give us? That's okay. So property LHS does not exist on Rockstar Node. The TypeScript compiler is blowing up because it's saying, I don't know how to evaluate this. So how do we do a type coercion in uh, thingy? Um, I need to dive off in one minute, by the way, folks. I'm going to cut the stream short and we're going to come back to this tomorrow. Uh, so let me just, that's TypeScript. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, uh, TypeScript um, type casting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing in there talks about casting, type casting. Okay. The as keyword, or yeah, yeah, no, yeah, what? You can use the ding operator to carry out typecasting. All right, so See if this works. That looks very promising, friends. 
So there's a result. There's the parse tree. Um, var output one uh, uh, console.log uh, evaluate evaluate result undefined undefined evaluate switch no dot kind okay bit of quick and dirty debugging here Okay, that's interesting. Node.kind is coming back as undefined in all these cases, uh, which makes me think that this syntax on these discriminators is not quite right. Let's try that again. There we go. Look at that. Boom. That's what we want. Um, so we got 26 out of the first one. We got three out of the second one. And uh, if I come over, so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 times 5, 4 times 5 is 20, so 26. So that, friends, I am going to call success. We have got the working kind of guts of a TypeScript. I'm not 100% happy with it, but the high points are hanging together. The whole thing sort of vaguely works. <laughs> Um, I know a hell of a lot more about TypeScript and uh, Dino and JavaScript import syntax and that kind of stuff than I did when we kicked off an hour and a half ago. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm going to stick this in a folder. I'm going to think about it overnight, and uh, I'm going to come back to it for the next exciting episode. Thanks for tuning in, friends. Uh, I'm going to go and talk to somebody on Zoom now. So uh, nice to see you all. Take it easy. Have a good one. See you soon.